Alrighty. Hi guys. This is Miss North here to give you your video lesson for Friday, September 4th, when Miss North will be out with a sub. So lucky for you guys, you still get a lesson by me. It's just pre-recorded instead. Um, yesterday, on Thursday, we read this story called Something to Remember Me By. I want you to take a few minutes to pause, and you can even pause the video if you'd like, and I want you to think about what do you remember about the story? And if you like to jot things down like I do, you could write it on some notebook paper, but just think about what are some things that you remember about the story? Okay, so we're gonna reread the story for a second time today. And today, I want you to listen really carefully for any details that you might have missed in the first reading. And I also have another reason for rereading the story. So we've also heard this story this week. We heard it on Tuesday and on Wednesday. So I want you to think about as I read again to you, something to remember by, I want you to really think about these two stories that we read this week and about how the two stories are alike or similar and how they are different or not similar, not the same. Okay, so this story is something to remember by. So remember, you're listening for details that you might have missed the first time we read it, and you're also trying to connect it to our other text, the lotus seed. So thinking how they're similar and how they are different. My grandfather, Nicholas Krawchuk, gave his young bride, Eva, a cedar chest. Over the years, that chest had a proud place in their bedroom, at the foot of the bed. It saw the birth of two children and the comings, goings, and conversations of everyday family life. It saw hardship and good times. It held the treasures of a lifetime, and it held the love and memories that connect generations. It also stood witness to the special relationship between a little girl and her grandmother, my Baba, Eva Krauchuk. As I look through old photographs, I find half-forgotten images, mostly of simple moments that didn't seem special then, but they are now. So much to remember her by. If only that chest could talk. They were special times, the times that make memories. Every time the little girl visited her grandmother, the house smelled so good. Homemade soup and roast chicken and fresh baked cookies. The house was happy on sunny days and cozy on rainy days. It was always fun. The little girl could have a snack anytime she wanted. She could use the big box of crayons in the kitchen drawer to add drawings to the pad of clean white paper that was just for her. She could chatter about everything and ask questions by the dozen. And if she spilled her juice, her grandmother would just wipe it up, saying that accidents happened to little people and big people. Then her grandmother would smile a big, warm smile and give the little girl a warm, snuggly hug. The little girl visited her grandmother often. Her grandmother always had time to go for a walk or play a game of cards. Sometimes grandmother and granddaughter would go grocery shopping together. The little girl would choose whatever she wanted her grandmother to cook for dinner. Sometimes grandmother and granddaughter would get ready for a party for friends and relatives. The little girl would figure out exactly the right place to put each shiny spoon and knife and fork. Sometimes grandmother and granddaughter would water the garden at the back of the house or pick beans or pull carrots. And sometimes grandmother and granddaughter would just sit and watch television together. The grandmother would get an apple and a paring knife from the kitchen. Only big people could use the knife, she would tell her granddaughter. And the grandmother would carefully peel the apple, letting the strands of bread fall to the napkin in her lap. And she would cut the apple in half, dig out the core, and slice big wedges of juicy fruit for the both of them to munch on. You're the best grandmother in the whole world, the little girl would say. 
and the grandmother would smile a big, warm smile and give her granddaughter a warm, snuggly hug. At the end of one of the visits, the grandmother took her granddaughter's hand and led her to the bedroom. I want to give you something to remember me by, the grandmother started. Someday that cedar chest at the foot of the bed will be yours, but for now I want you to have this. And she handed her granddaughter a wooden doll. It wore a pale yellow dress with white flowers on it, and the painted face had bright red lips and a big, wide open eyes with long eyelashes. After that, many of the visits ended in the same way. Grandmother and granddaughter would go into the bedroom and the grandmother would say exactly the same thing. I want to give you something to remember me by. Someday that cedar chest at the foot of the bed will be yours, but for now I want you to have this. And the grandmother would give her granddaughter this or that. And as the girl grew, so did the number of things her grandmother gave her. A stuffed bear with soft white fur, a carved wooden flute, a china figurine of a boy and a small puppy, a shiny copper-colored coin with strange writing on it, a fancy pen that you had to use with special ink, a round gold watch on a thick chain, a silver picture frame, and a flowery orange and red and brown and blue tablecloth. That tablecloth was the one thing the little girl thought was really ugly, but she took it and said thank you anyways. Once the little girl asked why her grandmother gave her all these things to remember her by, and the grandmother smiled a big warm smile and gave her granddaughter a warm snuggly hug. Because everyone wants to be remembered, said the grandmother simply. The girl didn't quite understand. The girl grew up into a young woman, and she moved far away, but she and her grandmother would talk on the phone often. This was very exciting for the grandmother. It was a long-distance call, and she didn't get many of those. The grandmother would listen all about the young woman's work, about her new family, and she was so proud of her granddaughter. At the end of one telephone call, the grandmother told her granddaughter to watch for a package in the mail. The next week, a small box filled with tissue paper arrived, and nestled deep in the tissue was a hand-sewn cushion in the shape of a heart. It was stitched with big purple flowers, tiny pink flowers, and special lettering. There was a note with the cushion, something to remember me by. There came a day when the grandmother made an important long-distance call to her granddaughter. It was time to come and get the cedar chest. The grandmother was moving out of her house. The grandmother couldn't take care of the house anymore. She couldn't see as well as she used to. She couldn't hear as well as she used to. And her hands didn't work as well as they used to. And she was getting forgetful. She couldn't remember some times and places and names. So the young woman came to get the cedar chest and to help her grandmother pack. When all the packing was done, grandmother and granddaughter stood and looked at the empty house. The granddaughter was sad. The house was a very special place for her. And the grandmother was sad too, but not about the house. It was time to leave the house. Something else was bothering her. I'm worried, said the grandmother. I'm forgetting too many things. Everyone forgets things, responded her granddaughter reassuringly. But, said the grandmother softly, I'm scared that I'm going to forget you. The young woman was silent. She looked at her grandmother and she thought for a moment. The young woman reached over to the important boxes that her grandmother had insisted go with them to the car and she ripped the tape off the top of one of the boxes and rummaged through it. Finally, she found the photograph she was looking for of grandmother and granddaughter. In big, bold letters, the granddaughter wrote both their names on the back of the photograph. Something to remember me by, said the young woman. The grandmother smiled a big, warm smile and gave her granddaughter a warm, snuggly hug. Time passed. The grandmother wasn't feeling well and was very, very old. The granddaughter traveled once again to see her. When the young woman walked into her grandmother's room, she expected a big, warm smile and a warm, snuggly hug like always, but there was only a blank look. The young woman put down the flower she had brought. It's me. It's your granddaughter. It's me, she repeated, not believing her grandmother wouldn't remember her. But the grandmother only looked confused, and the young woman sat down by the bed. She talked to her grandmother while she was awake, 
She held her grandmother's hand when she fell asleep. The grandmother's hand was small and wrinkled, but it was soft and warm, and the granddaughter stroked the hand and she whispered, you're the best grandmother in the whole world. The grandmother opened her eyes, and then for a moment, she smiled that big, warm smile. The grandmother turned her head toward the drawer beside the bed. The young woman opened the drawer, and inside was the old photograph of grandmother and granddaughter, and the edges were tattered, and one corner of the photograph was bent. The writing on the back was smudged. The young woman went back to her home, her work, and her family. The cedar chest now sat in her bedroom at the foot of the bed. The chest was filled with all the special things the grandmother had given her granddaughter. And the young woman knelt beside the chest and opened it slowly, and she looked through the contents. She could almost hear her grandmother's words. I want to give you something to remember me by. Her grandmother had given her so much more than that would ever fit in the cedar chest. As a young woman glanced up from the cedar chest, she noticed her reflection in the dresser mirror. She got up and went to the mirror. She looked closely, and she looked for a long time. And then she smiled a big, warm smile, her grandmother's smile. The end. So I want you to think... What did you hear during the second reading of the story that maybe you missed yesterday during our first reading? And you can pause the video, you can write some ideas down or just think, but make sure that you're doing some real thinking. Okay, and now I want you to think, what do you remember about this story? So you can pause the video, you can think. You can write it down and talk to your mom if she's sitting next to you, whatever. What do you remember about the lotus seed? Okay, and now I want you to think, in what ways are something to remember me by and the lotus seed similar or alike? What makes them the same? So think of a couple of things. What do you think? And for our very last question, it's in what ways are the two stories different? Now for that last question about how they're different, that is our discussion question today. So in our Friday folder for this week, if you keep scrolling down underneath where this video is posted, you'll see the discussion question. Remember, discussion, discussion questions are graded for participation and you need to have at least three sentences. You need to have capitalization, punctuation, and you need to use the spell check feature. Okay? All right, my friends. Thank you so much.